it needs work, but the writers are doing a great job. And I read it three weeks ago and it really like lit a fire in me. The best version of what the next chapter for Spider-Man looks like. Zendaya and I sat down and read it together. And we at times were like bouncing around the living room. Like this is a real movie worthy of like the fans respect. But there's a few things we need to figure out before we can, we can get that really going. But you know, we're working now with the pedal is to the metal. We, we're trying to get it going as soon as possible. Things are looking great, but there's still a lot of moving pieces that need to come together for us to hit the ground running. You know, I've been speaking to Downey a lot, especially about him making his return, which right. is super he's exciting. Back. He's, he's back. He's... That was a tough secret to sit on because I, I have a reputation for ruining things and I yeah, like I've strategically have done no press. a little loose-lipped around little MCU loose -lipped. secrets. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Tom Holland just revealed a bunch of details about how Spider-Man 4 has changed the past few years and how Robert Downey Jr. has helped shape that. Both him coming back as his version of Doctor Doom in the next couple of Avengers movies and in real life, Robert Downey Jr. helping Tom Holland change the Spider-Man 4 movie as they're developing his new trilogy of Spider-Man movies. And apparently RDJ has also helped him shape the future of what Spider-Man is going to become in like the next 10 years, like way beyond the next Spider-Man 4 movie. So we'll break it all down. And because Venom The Last Dance is coming out next week, Tom Hardy has been doing a bunch of interviews talking about Venom crossing over with Tom Holland's Spider-Man. So we'll address that too, just because there's so much stuff going on behind the scenes with the Spider-Man character. A lot of Marvel and Sony's plans for what's happening with Venom, Null, also tied up in the future of Tom Holland's Spider-Man. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Love seeing Tom Holland give all these interviews, joking about how he spoils everything. It would not be a Tom Holland interview if he were talking about accidentally spoiling stuff. Really big reminder too, my Venom The Last Dance review will post next week after they let us, and I'll do a post credit scene video, full breakdown, all the Easter eggs after it actually comes out later in the week. But during his talk here, Tom Holland explained a lot of what happened behind the scenes at Marvel and Sony after Avengers Endgame and Spider-Man No Way Home. Those two movies were the end of his contract with Sony, so if you didn't realize, Tom Holland doesn't actually have a contract with Marvel. Back when he became Spider-Man, he signed a six movie deal with Sony to play Spider-Man. Sony then signed a contract with Marvel to share his character and make all those movies on his contract. He explained that after No Way Home, Sony and Marvel both came to him wanting to do another similar contract, like basic same deal, new Spider-Man trilogy. We've mostly been talking about Spider-Man 4, but remember they do want to make a new trilogy of Spider-Man movies for five and six. And on top of that, at least three more Marvel movies inside the MCU that are not solo Spider-Man movies and potentially more cameos and smaller appearances on top of that too. They usually have to build that stuff into contracts. Like if you want Spider-Man to show up during Daredevil Born Again, they actually have to work that into his contract with Sony. But outside of the new Spider-Man trilogy, the MCU movies we know that are on his new contract are Avengers 5 Doomsday, Avengers 6 Secret Wars, and then another mystery Marvel movie, which I'll talk about later in the video. I think we already figured out what that is, just based on what Tom Hardy has been talking about. When Tom Holland talks about how Robert Downey Jr. helped shape all this in Spider-Man 4 specifically, there are two big reasons why that happened. In real life, he became a mentor to Tom Holland during the filming of Captain America Civil War, and since then has been kind of like a surrogate father to him behind the scenes. That's why you always see him talking so much about Robert Downey Jr. and how big a part of his life he is. He usually just calls him Downey or Robert when he's doing interviews. He said that when Marvel and Sony came back to him after No Way Home asking him for more Spider-Man movies, he was now in the same position that Robert Downey Jr. was in during the original Infinity Saga of Avengers movies. Now again during Avengers 5 and Avengers 6. So at a certain point, Marvel needed Robert Downey Jr. more than he needed them. I did a completely separate video about this because Robert Downey Jr. did a, like a totally separate interview where he talked about how Kevin Feige hands to knees asking him to come back as this Doctor Doom character. It was hilarious. I'll post a link for that at the end of this. He'd already earned more money than he'll ever be able to spend. He's already won an Oscar, so he's got the respect of his peers. He also has financial success. He's already achieved anything anyone would ever want to achieve. So even though he had a big say in the creative behind the scenes of what they were doing with the actual Marvel movies, now he has way more creative control than he did before, particularly with the really big Avengers movies. And now Tom Holland is saying that that just happened to him, too, with the Spider-Man character in those movies. 
When he says he's been talking to Downey, Robert Downey Jr., what he means is he's been advising him how to take advantage of that newfound power over Marvel and Sony, how to take more creative control over the future direction of Spider-Man. The other major part of this is on a story level, just a practical level within the actual MCU timeline. Tom Holland reveals that he knew Robert Downey Jr. was coming back as his Doctor Doom long before Marvel announced it at Comic-Con publicly. Love all of his jokes about having to sit on the information, afraid that he'll spoil it because he is one of the classic spoiler bros. Mark Ruffalo would be so proud. Most of the conversation about Robert Downey Jr. coming back as Doctor Doom has been about the new Fantastic Four movie where he's supposed to make his first appearance in live action, then in Avengers 5 Doomsday, which is the MCU version of Time Runs Out from the comics with a lot of changes, like it won't be exactly like the comics. Tom Holland then explained how the plot of Spider-Man 4 had to change recently because of where it fits or where it needs to fit in the greater Marvel Phase 6 storyline between all that and Robert Downey Jr. coming back. You know, that's one of the challenges we're facing and, and the time in which we need to get that done is a tall order, but definitely achievable. <laughs> Obviously, one of the things to like bear in mind with Marvel is that there is your film is a small cog in a large machine and that machine has got to keep running. And you need to make sure that you can fit into that timeline at the right time to benefit the bigger picture. What he means is the plot of Spider-Man 4 has to connect with Avengers 5 and Avengers 6. And in addition, there was a recent report that his movie would invoke Robert Downey Jr.'s Doctor Doom in some way. Spider-Man 4, if you look at the timeline, is supposed to come out between Avengers 5 and Avengers 6. So by the time that movie releases, we'll have already seen the downer ending in Avengers 5 when his Doctor Doom spanks the new Avengers all over the place and the other MCU heroes, meaning that Spider-Man 4 will have to address that in some way on a story level. Now, I'm not expecting a huge Doctor Doom presence in Spider-Man 4 because they're already doing so much with the new Spider-Man villains they're introducing, other new main characters, the Venom symbiote storyline with the Null character. I don't think the movie can handle a major Doctor Doom subplot on top of that. So until we see more evidence, I'm just assuming the movie will reference him in some way. But as Tom Holland says, the movie needs to make sense in the timeline between Avengers 5 and Avengers 6. Everybody's been posting the I hate you 3000 memes for when his Spider-Man learns about Doctor Doom. There's even been some cosplayers because New York Comic Con happened this week doing that. Why do you look so much like my best friend Tony Stark who died and why are you so evil? It's kind of funny how physically Robert Downey Jr. himself might not actually show up in Spider-Man 4, yet he's had this massive influence over the actual plot of the movie and over the future of the Spider-Man character just in general inside the MCU, completely separate from what his Doctor Doom is actually going to be doing while he is around. Everywhere I go, I see his face. On a story level, though, I think what Tom Holland also means is that after his adventures fighting this new Doctor Doom that he's playing, Spider-Man will fundamentally be changed going forward into Marvel Phase 7, whatever that Spider-Man 5 movie winds up turning into. He also talks a lot about the deadlines that they're working up against too, like they are cooking full steam ahead. But I wouldn't be surprised that they now take three years between future Spider-Man sequels after Spider-Man 4. Previously, Tom Holland had to show up anytime Marvel and Sony wanted him, and Sony wanted those Spider-Man solo movies to come out every two years, global pandemic notwithstanding. Now that Tom Holland has the power to actually pump the brakes on all that and make them take the time they need to make the story better, don't be surprised if we don't get Spider-Man 5 until 2029. When it comes to that other movie on his contract, my guess for the extra mystery MCU Marvel movie will wind up being the Null crossover film. And it won't just be an MCU movie, it'll be like a Marvel Sony co-production. And they'll just do that as a totally separate Avengers Endgame level event, but for just Spider-Man related characters with Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield coming back again. Just because Donny Cates, the creator of Null in the comics, as well as the director of Venom 3, keeps saying that this is just the beginning for the Null character, they have much, much bigger plans at Sony. Tom Hardy also keeps saying that he's done as Venom after Venom 3, but my early theory there, just based on the way that he keeps talking about crossing over with Spider-Man, like, oh yeah, might be crossing over with Spider-Man, but he also keeps saying that he's done as the Venom character, is what that means is that he'll just continue, but maybe as the voice of the symbiote in Spider-Man's head when he eventually gets it. So that Tom Hardy keeps coming back, but it's Spider-Man wearing the symbiote for a couple movies. Supposedly Spider-Man is even going to have that symbiote after Secret Wars during Spider-Man 5 too. Everybody post all your reactions in the comments below. I wish Tom Holland would go on and talk more, like you just wanted to keep going because eventually he will start spoiling stuff. 
The other funny thing behind the scenes, you might have seen this picture of Jessica Alba with Robert Downey Jr. It is totally possible she does show up as her version of Sue Storm during Avengers Secret Wars. But if you've been following the development of all the Marvel movies before the MCU era, before the MCU began, or if you've been watching my Fantastic Four videos, I actually talked about this. But originally, Kevin Feige and Jon Favreau revealed that Robert Downey Jr. screen tested as her version of Doctor Doom in those original Fantastic Four movies before he ever became Iron Man in that first Iron Man movie. I think everyone will agree that that was the right move on Marvel's part to not cast him as Doctor Doom back then, but it is funny to see him come back as a version of Doctor Doom and share some screen time with her potentially in a future Avengers movie as that Doctor Doom. Right now, we're also in the middle of New York Comic Con. They released a bunch of trailers. There's a brand new Daredevil Born Again trailer I'll try to do a video for as soon as possible. Like I said, though, next week, big Venom week because we have the movie coming out. My Venom The Last Dance review will post earlier in the week as soon as they let us. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. My post credit scene video, full Easter eggs breakdown videos will post after it comes out later in the week. So be sure to go see it as soon as possible. Do not wait. Really hoping they go out with a bang. Like I said, Robert Downey Jr. did a completely separate interview where he basically explained the circumstances of how he came back as Doctor Doom, like why Marvel wanted him back in the first place, how that all started a year ago. Like this started a long time ago. Click here for that. It is hilarious. And click here for my new Venom The Last Dance video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.